Peplink has introduced a new version of its flagship MaxBR2 Pro 5G mobile router equipped with next generation Qualcomm X62 5G cellular modems. What makes this such a special, exciting improvement, and how is this different than the original MaxBR2 Pro? Stay tuned, we've got all the details. Hello, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you the details of a piece of hardware we've been waiting quite a long time for, the next generation of Peplink's MaxBR2 Pro 5G cellular router. This has been a top pick in our daily driver for over a year now. It's a router that we love. But when we did our initial first look on this last year, we pointed out one big gotcha that we thought would have a lot of people hesitate to jump on something so expensive. And that was that the cellular modems inside it were even at the time, were a bit dated. They were based on the Qualcomm X55, a first-generation cellular modem, and the writing was on the wall. There was already new-generation modems coming out and almost coming out to market that had much more capability and, more importantly, were much more future-proof. And when you're investing in an expensive cellular router like this, you want something that has got technology that's going to have legs to last for years. So this new router is exactly the same as the old Max BR2 Pro, other than, well, it addressed that one major concern of ours and has new updated cellular modems. So it's a dual 5G device with now, instead of an X55 modem, it has a Qualcomm X62 modem chipset in it. Everything else about the router is exactly the same other than the new modems, but that is a pretty big deal and we'll explain why right now. So what makes the X62 so much better than the X55? Well, we've been covering this for quite a while. You know, 5G cellular technology does continue to evolve. 5G is not just a static thing, just like 4G went through several tiers of evolution. And the X55 was a first generation 5G modem chipset. It was very capable, very fast. It can do a lot, but a lot of technology has advanced since the X55 came out, and the X62 has capabilities that the X55 just is not capable of. And there's two really important factors that come into play here that is already important out there in the cellular marketplace. One, the X62 can combine together multiple 5G bands from different areas of spectrum. So in 5G, you might often have long range, low band spectrum that can go a longer distance, but it's pretty slow, sometimes not much faster than 4G. And then you've got mid band spectrum that can be really, really fast, but it doesn't travel very far. The X55 can use one band or the other, but could not combine the different bands together to try and get the best of long range and high speed simultaneously. The X62 has much better capabilities for combining different types of 5G spectrum together. So it means it can take, for example, T-Mobile's low band, long range 5G band N71 and combine it with the mid band N41, which can be super fast. So the you can be speaking to the tower over a long range with N71 for your uplink and the tower can be talking to you with N41 super fast for the downlink. So this has the potential to give people like RVers and cruisers who are in fringe areas or areas with weak signals far from the tower, much better speed over a much greater range with the X62 than the X55 would be capable of. This is at least theoretically and has been demonstrated in cellular modems and uh, consumer hotspots that have already embraced the X65 and X62 generation. So better speeds over a longer range, and this will help all cellular carriers. The X62 also supports a lot more 5G bands than the X55 does, so it can talk to more bands. Now, the X55 did support most of the bands in use in the USA, but the X62 goes even further. It has a lot more international bands, which will be important for international roaming, and it supports some of the new bands that are starting to be deployed, like the bands that Dish Network, America's new fourth carrier, is going to be rolling out on. So a lot more bands, which gives a lot more future-proofing there as far as, as cellular carriers begin to roll out new bands. And then one band in particular that is a huge advantage for the X62 is what is known as the Andromeda spectrum. This is a big chunk of a spectrum that is the core of AT&T's next generation 5G network. It's just starting to become very prevalent in uh, 2023 and is kind of the heart of AT&T's future high fast 
5G network. And the X55 was just flat out not compatible with this Andromeda spectrum, whereas the X62 is. So if you're an AT&T customer, the older 5G modems just couldn't talk to a big chunk of what is AT&T's current and future deployment. So this is a pretty big deal um, for AT&T as well as well all the other carriers with that um, multi 5G carry aggregation. So a lot of new tech capabilities there. And one other way that the X62 is just kind of fundamentally more future proof is it is the first Qualcomm modem chipset that is um, 5G phase two compatible. So that's the next phase of the 5G cellular standard. So as the towers and networks evolve in the years ahead, the X55 is kind of at the, the, the end of what it can do, whereas the X62 is going to be compatible and will be upgradable as you know, the technology continues to evolve. So the modem itself is going to have a lot longer lifetime, much more future proof. And we're pretty excited to see a dual 5G device from Peplink with this next generation modem. We've been asking for this for over a year, waiting for it, and it is finally here. So it's pretty exciting. And that, as we said, is the big new difference with this next generation version of the BR2 Pro 5G. Now, what else is in the BR2 Pro 5G? Why do we love it? And now, why we had it as our daily driver for the past year, we'll go over the rest of the specs for those who might not be familiar with what this router is capable of. Now here is a uh, Max BR2 Pro 5G, um, and it is kind of a Swiss army knife of connectivity. It can combine together a lot of different connections simultaneously with Peplink speed fusion bonding technology. We've, with our BR2 Pro over the past year, have often bonded together up to 11 different connections. It's got the dual 5G modems now with the X62 um, next generation modems inside of it. And then, well, it's got a lot of ethernet ports on the back. So it's got two ethernet WAN ports. So you can have two WAN inputs such as Starlink or a cable modem or a hotspot that has ethernet out to give you additional inputs there. And these are 2.5 gigabit per second WAN ports. Then it's got four ethernet LAN ports. So it makes it really easy to have wired devices locally without needing a switch. You've got a lot of ports to play with usually more than enough for uh, most uh, many RV and boat installations. And with Peplink Firmware 8.3, they added the ability to use um, some of the LAN ports as WAN ports. So you get an additional WAN port option there, whether you're using the VLAN feature or their Synergy feature to control another Peplink router and take advantage of its WAN port. So you've got suddenly a lot more WAN ports there as well. And then, well, this is a um, Wi-Fi 6 uh, cellular um, and Wi-Fi equipped router. So the Wi-Fi uh, radios can act as WAN inputs as well as so you can do Wi-Fi as WAN and have two Wi-Fi inputs from the, the dual band Wi-Fi radio. So it's got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And so then more WAN ports there as well. And then there is an addition that um, Peplink made on the BR2 that we were very happy when it first came out is they added a USB port here, which we've been asking for for years with the Max line, and they finally added it. So a USB port means if you've got a cellular hotspot that you take with you when you're out and about, well, now you can plug it in and do USB tethering. So yet another WAN input that you can take advantage of. So a lot of WAN capabilities there. Um, to basically make this the ultimate junction box for bringing a lot of different connectivity together. Again, as I said, we've tested up to 11 different connections, and you can go even beyond that and use Speed Fusion to bond those together for enhanced speed and enhanced reliability. So an incredibly functional, useful, practical Swiss Army knife. Looking at the rest of what's on the back here, there's also this port that we kind of wish they didn't have and the device was just physically smaller. This is an old RS-232C serial port, the kind of serial port that's been around since basically the dawn of the computer age. Not many consumer uses for this, but it is in useful in enterprise and fleet applications. So Peplink does have a lot of customers there and supports that. And then a DC power port that supports between 10 volt and 30 volt power in. They include in the box an AC power supply, but you can just get... Um, easy DC direct wiring and run this directly off of um, a vehicle's uh, DC supply, whether 12 volts or 24 volts. So really functional for vehicles and you know, for installation of vehicles, it is a very rugged device. It is designed for vibration, it is designed for extreme heat and cold, has metal heat sinks on the top. So quite practical there. Flipping around to the back, you'll see 
all those antenna ports. So if you've got a, um, uh, cellular antennas on your roof, whether they're 4x4 MIMO or 2x2 MIMO, you can take advantage of them. Um, it, again, it's dual cellular uh, modem, so you need two antennas with either four or two of these ports used for each. So a lot of antennas. If you don't have enough antennas on your RV or boat roof, they do include um, all you need here as just little internal stubbies. So particularly if you've got a fiberglass RV, you're not... Um, wanting to put holes in your roof, you can actually pretty get a pretty good signal. Just putting all of these on here does look kind of like a porcupine though. And well, you also get Wi-Fi antennas for the Wi-Fi radios and a GPS antenna for the GPS that's on here. So a lot of antennas, a lot of connectivity here on the back. And then also on the back, you'll see this little slot underneath it is four nano SIM slots. So two SIM cards per modem. So you can have each modem switch between two different carriers, for example. So you have four carriers all sims for all of them installed right here a lot of flexibility and now with peplink firmware 8.4 that just came out you can also install e-sims up to two per modem so you can have four different sim cards for each modem all in here so a ton of connectivity options a ton of redundancy all in one relatively small box that you can mount easily inside of an rv or boat in your tech cabinet so a lot of capabilities there the CPU inside this is a, uh, capable of gigabit routing speeds. It's uh, pretty hefty and fast. Um, even using Peplink Speed Fusion bonding, you can get up to 400 megabits per second. So very, very capable uh, router with, um, yeah, we think this has pretty long legs. And we've been very happy with this over our past year of testing. And we're very excited to begin testing the new version with the X62 modems. So in conclusion, the, the, we're quite excited about this next generation of um, Peplink router and the new modems because we think it makes it a much more attractive product for something you're going to buy and hope to use for four or five years even longer. Much better future-proofing. And that is important when you're spending so much on a router. And that is, well, the other big um, unavoidable downside of the Max BR2 Pro 5G is it is priced at pro enterprise levels. It is a $28.99. So it is a very, very expensive router. But well, the good news is they Peplink did not raise the price, even though they put in the much more capable modem. So it is the exact same price it was before, did not go up, um, but did not go down either. The thing you now have to be very careful for though is because there's so little to distinguish the new max br2 pro 5g from the old is when you're shopping you have to make sure you're shopping for the right version of this the versions with the x62 modem have dot a dash 5g n in the model number on the back no other distinguishing feature compared to the other version. The other version had dash 5GH for the North American version um, and 5GD for the international version. So 5GN is what you want to be looking for on the model number. And when you're ordering this, make sure your online stores know which version you're getting because the old version and the new version are likely going to coexist in the channel for a while. Now, Peplink is the BR2 Pro 5G is the first of their... 5G devices to migrate to the next generation modems, but Peplink is actually also going to be migrating all of their other products and 5G devices to use the 5G N modems as well. The BR1 Pro 5G is also just now available and beginning to ship. And that is the little brother of the BR2 Pro 5G. So the BR1 Pro is definitely worth considering. It is a single cellular modem. It does not have all the ethernet ports. It only has um, limited WAN capabilities compared to this does not have the USB port, but it is still very capable and it is only 999. So the new version of the BR1 is definitely something to consider if you do not need dual integrated 5G or some of the other more advanced features that are only in the BR2 series. So that is something to keep an eye out on as well. I'd like to thank uh, Peplink and our partner Mobile Must Have for getting us with basically the very first uh, BR2 Pro 5G with the new modem so that we can begin testing it head to head against the older version that we have with the X55 modems. We're eager to see if the theoretical advantages actually play out in um, practical testing. We'll also be putting the BR1 Pro 5G into testing. We've got one of those inbound as well that we'll be doing a first look video here with the Mobile Internet Resource Center soon. So we're going to be testing these over our long evaluation period to see how well they work. If there's any 
downsides or glitches that come from these new modems but overall we're quite excited by the capabilities on paper the better value and the better future proofing so um, if you've been holding off waiting for 5g or to make the jump to 5g now well wait for the initial testing reviews to come in but now is potentially the time the net cellular networks have evolved to the point that the capabilities are often quite stupendous compared to 4g so um, we're quite excited by this and now we'd like to also specifically thank our uh, mobile internet aficionados the members of our site the mobile internet research center that make all of our content possible and our mobile internet aficionados get a substantial discount when they order hardware like this 10 percent um, can make the cost of membership actually more than pay for itself if you're buying expensive gear. So uh, mobile internet aficionados, please check your discounts page to find out how to get cheaper gear and access to our Peplink Resource Center that we've co-developed with our partners at Mobile Must Have. So a lot of deep dive tutorials on how to take advantage of the advanced features of routers like this. So um, definitely check that out and members follow along in our members forums where we'll be sharing our hands-on testing notes as we dive in and begin to compare and see what sort of real world differences we see between the x55 and the x62 because um, well we'll see what we see now and see how it changes as we take it to various exciting and exotic and remote locations because we're RVers and we're out on a fan trip right now so this is the latest from Peplink. We've been waiting a long time for this new generation of modems to come to routers like this. You know, the cellular devices like phones and even some consumer hotspots have already been on the X65 generation. The latest flagship phones are on the X70 generations like the new i15. So they're always going to be a step ahead when it comes to modem technology. But the X65 being the and the X62 being the first of the 5G phase two modems really sets a good baseline for something that's going to be long-term future-proof. And we think this is going to be technology that has legs that will last years to come. So stay tuned for our testing. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.